Good morning, folks. Today we've got deadly earth events, long-term solar data, record cold temperatures, and our top science news. Let's begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star with us watching the large coronal hole depart towards the far side. While we've had no sunspots or solar flares, the coronal hole's solar wind stream took its first slice at Earth yesterday, and with the plasma speed and temperature, purple and green, beginning to plateau, as the density above an orange begins to drop, we have seen the peak disruption of that first slice of the stream, KP4, just minor instability. But there could be more streams from this opening, it is quite large, and they could be impacting over at least the next day and a half. If any subsequent streams are equal or greater intensity, we would expect a low-level geomagnetic storm. Let's take a look at sunspot cycles. The current one is on the right, last one bleeds off the left. Right now we are entering the trough, as we've been saying the last few months, and if you look back to this area last solar cycle, it appears that we are about where we were at the end of 2007 or 2008. The current cycle renewed December 2008, and so we're likely just a few months to about a year from the next sunspot cycle, cycle 25. Bad news coming out of Brazil where torrential rains finally forced the mountainside to give way. Silver lining is a much larger number of people were rescued than confirmed perished, including a weeks-old infant pulled out alive. The real November cold snap has begun. Record lows are falling in the central states, and this is going to continue with jet stream dips, Arctic air intrusions, and the polar vortex deciding that the U.S. gets winter a bit early this year. The concept of unseasonal weather is one we hit yesterday in terms of spring cold and crop loss. Well, this study finds that the absolute temperatures are not changing nearly as much as the relative ones. That would be t-shirt weather in January or late spring frost and snow, the kind that keeps farmers up at night. The extreme unseasonables are where we're seeing the largest changes. And no, that does not bode well for agriculture. Interesting paper out on carbon reconstructions and the grand minima of the sun. I believe it can help you get a feel for the ups and downs over hundreds of years and why a grand minimum is very much expected once again. We'll come back to that in just a moment. First, dark matter cannot catch a break. It's one thing not to find it, and to keep having universal observations offer violations of its paradigm, but we're starting to see paper after paper on alternative theories that simply don't need it. Free PDF on archive for that one. Coming back to Grand Minimum and other topics, in yesterday's members podcast, Fly on the Wall, we had a couple good stories including the prediction difference between the observers and Dr. Valentina Zarkova in terms of the Grand Solar Minimum. If you had any confusions about the methods used or the reasoning offered, that part of the show begins at 18 minutes 23 seconds and goes on another 18 minutes or so. All the topics were very fun and we greatly appreciate your support over at the website. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.